So this week we'll be continuing our lesson in in factorization. If you can remember last week we dealt with common factor dots which is difference of two squares and grouping. So this week we'll be looking at trinomials. Okay so first thing that's very important to understand is there are two types of trinomials. These two types are where the last term of the expression of the trinomial is positive, so this is the first type, okay? So when the last term is positive, we know both brackets will have the same sign. So both brackets, same sign. And then the second type of trinomial we have is where the last term is negative. So when the last term is negative, we'll have one positive bracket and one negative bracket. Okay, cool. So if we're gonna look at the example now, so this is gonna be the first example we get. Say they gave us a squared plus seven a plus ten. Now straight away we can see the last term here is a positive, so we know it's a type 1 trinomial. And that means that both brackets carry the same sign as the last term here, okay? As the middle term, sorry. It's a very important thing also to note with the first with the first type of trinomial. If the sign's positive, which is the first type, then both brackets will carry the same sign as the middle term. So here you can see that the middle term is positive, so both brackets will c carry a positive, okay? And if both brackets, um, if the middle term here was a negative, then both brackets would carry a negative sign. Okay, so let's have a look here. So first thing we know is with trinomials, is that we have here, in the example, a squared plus 7a plus 10. So the first thing we always know is we're going to have our two brackets open with a and a because when we times these two a's together we'll get the a squared so by factorizing it we're splitting it up over here. So now how are we going to factorize this now? So looking at this we have a rule here where we say a times c which is your first term times your last term okay but it's going to be the coefficient over here, okay, so we know that the coefficient here is 1. So we know this is going to be 1 times 10, which is ultimately going to give us 10. And down here we have b just by itself, so we can see that our b over here is 7. So now what we need to look at is what two numbers can we times together over here? to give us 10, but if we add it together, it will give us 7. So the nice way that I like to make this a bit easier is we're going to take what is a times c here, which is 10, and we're going to find the factors of 10, okay? So if we look at the factors of 10, we have 1 and 10, 2 and 5, and yes, okay, so that's going to be all the factors. Um, so now if we're going to look at this, we know that we, if we times 1 and 10, we can get 10. We know that if we times 2 and 5, we also get 10, right? But now which one, if we add them together, will give us 7 over here? It's obviously going to be 2 and 5, right? So we know that both signs are going to be the same, and because the middle term was a positive, we know that they're both positive, so if we're adding these two together, we do get 7. And if we times them together, we get positive 10 as well. So what we do here is we take these two, and we take them to our brackets, okay? So, when we take it to our brackets, we'll have positive 2 and positive 5. So, we found out now that our term factorized is a plus 2 and a plus 5. And if you want to check that, we would times out the brackets as we do first in first out. So it's a squared plus 5a plus 2a plus 10. So that was the a squared 
the a times the a, the a times the 5, then the 2 times the a, then the 2 times the 5. And so ultimately we get, oops, sorry, we get a squared plus 7a plus 10. So that's just the way of checking our answer. We don't have to do this, but it's always good to be sure. So let's look at another example over here. We have a squared minus 13a plus 36. Okay, so we know firstly always we're going to have a and a. So now we're going to look at the expression that we have here. So in this trinomial, the last term is a positive, but we can see here that the middle term is a negative. So because the last terms are positive, we know that the two, the two brackets will have the same sign, but because the middle term is a negative, we'll know that those signs are negatives. Okay, so using our rule here again, we have a times c, and then b over there. a times c is, so it's 1 times 36, so we get 36 over here, and then our b is negative 13. So whatever we are times in together needs to give us 36 also needs to add to negative 13. So what we're going to do, factors of 36, we get 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 4 and 9, and 6 and 6. Okay, so looking at this over here now, what two terms here can we times together, but they will also add up to negative 13, or just look at it as 13 for now. So straight away we can see here, we have a 4 and a 9, if we times those two together, we're going to get 36, right? And if they were both negative, because we know that both signs are going to be negative because of the middle term being negative over here, we know that negative 4 minus 9 is going to give us negative 13. So therefore we know that this is our two, our two numbers over here that we can put into our brackets. So we'll have a minus 4 and then a minus 9. Again, you can check your answer to see that it's correct. But for now, I'm just going to move on to the next example. Okay. So looking at this over here, we have example number 3. <coughs> example number 3 says a squared plus 5a minus 6. Straight away you can just open up your brackets along. We have a and a. So now looking at our expression, we have our last term as a negative. So we know that one bracket is going to be positive and one bracket is going to be negative, right? Cool. So we come here with our rule, a times c and then b, a times c, we have 1 times negative 6. So we know this is going to be negative 6. So whatever we times in together has to give us negative 6. And then our b is positive 5. Cool. So now we have negative 6 over there. So we're just going to take this down as a positive 6, right? We're going to look for the factors. So we have 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Now already I can see here that if I have, <coughs> see if I'm looking here at 1 and 6 over here, if I times them together, right? If 1 was positive and 1 was negative, then I'd get negative 6. But now how can I, which one needs to be positive and negative for me to get? the 5 over here. If I look at that, it's going to be positive 6 and negative 1. Positive 6 times negative 1 is going to give me negative 6. And the positive 6 minus 1 is going to give me 5. So the way that I'm checking that out is I'm saying negative 1 times 6, right? It's going to be negative 6. And then negative 1 plus 6 gives me positive 5. So now we have our numbers, we can take it up here, we get that as our answers. Cool. Now to look at 
maybe just one more example. So we get given here, 8 to the power of 3 plus a squared minus 6a. So straight off the bat we can see here that there's something different about this expression now. We have 8 to the power of 3 over here, which we're not familiar with in trinomials, but if you look at this, we have a to the power 3, a squared, and 6a. So, what can we take out as a common factor here? We can see now that each term has something in common, and that is a. So, if we're going to take out a, what we're going to be left with is a squared plus a minus 6. So, we can see now it's come down to a more familiar look, something we're familiar with, right? So, we know... Once we take that down, we're going to have a and a. So, once again here, yeah, last term is a negative. So, we know that we're going to have a one positive and one negative bracket. So, again with our rule, a times c and b. a times c over here is one, time, one times 6 over here. So, remember we're dealing with a bracket now, eh? 1 times negative 6 we get, negative 6 once again is our a times c, but our b this time is going to be 1. Okay. So if we can look at this, once again we can look for our factors over here of 6. We get 1 and 6, 2 and 3. So now if we're looking at this, 2 times 3, if 1 is positive and 1 is negative, we can get to negative 6 as well. But what one is going to get us to? Positive 1. So, if we look at that, if we have a negative 2 and a positive 3, so we do negative 2 times positive 3, we get a negative 6. But if we get a negative 2 plus 3, we get a positive 1. So we know that this is going to be what we're going to use. So we'll have a minus 2 and a plus 3. So you can see that we've used our rules pretty well here. As you can see, common factor as well came into this one to bring it down to a simpler trinomial, which we could factorize into two further brackets. Always trying to remember our first type of trinomial, that if the last terms are positive, both brackets carry the same sign as the, as the middle term. And if the last term is a negative, one positive bracket and one negative bracket, right? And then always remember our rule a times c over here and then b we always try to times two terms together to get to our a times c but if we add those two terms together they need to add up to our b right cool so thank you for joining in on the lesson today and that is all thank you